somebody know that you're glad that you're here. Tell them that you've missed them. Let them know that they've chosen a good place to come and hear a powerful word of God today, this morning. Hallelujah. Pusen de un lado para otro. Déjenme saber a alguien que está contento que están aquí esta mañana. And we have the nations represented here this morning. Todas las naciones están representadas aquí esta mañana. Hallelujah. We want to welcome our viewers. We're glad that you've chosen a good place to hear a powerful word of God this morning that's coming from the throne room of heaven. Hallelujah. We had an awesome time this weekend. We took the children to a kids' jam, and I'm telling you, the power of God was in that place over those children. They received the Holy Ghost. There was this one little boy, this one little boy that I just followed through the, through the service because his little heart was just going out. He cried every time I saw him. He was crying. The people were around him, and he, they were just praying for him. Do you know that we don't know what these children are facing in their homes? You know, they don't know how to express their feelings like we do. But he was expressing his feelings in what he was, in what he was uh, 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 crying. That's how he was expressing. You know, we go to counseling. We go to, we go to our neighbor. We go to our pastor. We go to somebody to share our feelings. Children don't do that. They harbor it in their heart. So keep children in your prayer at all times. I mean, God just opened up some things that for me to just understand the depths of the things that children go to. I want to share something real quick. Can I do that, Pastor? Um, the other day, last weekend, I was on my way to church in the evening. And um, I was outside of my house, and I'm telling you, a pain came over my leg, over my knee here. I could not move. I could not move. I didn't know how, but I could not move from where I was. And Olivia was running around outside. I said, Olivia, come here. Pray for me, Mija. Pray. She came over. She put her hand on my knee, and she said some little words because she hears me praying tongues. And so she'll make some noise, and then she goes, Amen. And she took off. I'm telling you but that God is my witness. That God is my witness. That when she took off and took her hand off, I felt the heat, the pain went away. I don't know what that was about. I believe that God allowed that to happen to me so we can open up our eyes and see that the power of God is in our children. And I really felt led that we need to show our children how to pray. We need to let them know that the power of God is in them. Because God showed it to me right then and there. Are we ready to praise the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? Father God, just open up our hearts. Anoint our ears to hear your word this morning. And anoint our heart, Father, to be open to your word. Let's praise him. Let's worship him. Because he is worthy to be praised. Give him a hand praise. Hallelujah.
Church, let your voice ring out this morning. We exalt him today. Give him the glory. Oh, Lord. Come on, exalt him this morning. I exalt thee. I house for one purpose, to exalt your name, to give you the glory. We come into this room this morning, individually we come in, but as we come in, we come in to be corporately worshiping before you. And Lord, today as we come together, we come in thanksgiving, we come in saying thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. Lord, we thank you. Come on, church, let's thank him for a few moments before we ask anything of him. Lord, we thank you, God, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you for the, your delivering power. We thank you, for, thank you, Lord, for the restoring power. And, Father, we pray today, God, and as we come into this house, that every mind will be regulated, every heart will be healed, Lord. Whatever the situations and circumstances that's going on in their lives, Heavenly Father, we just pray this 
morning. We pray for those in the hospitals and the nursing homes, the shut-ins, Lord, those that need your touch today. We pray not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit. We pray in authority. We pray in agreement today, Lord, that everything that's not of you has to bow at the name of Jesus. Lord, we call those things that be not as though they are. And we're believing according to your Word today, Father, that we're going to see change. We're going to see change in lives. We're going to see change in people's families. And, Father, today we're going to see change in our community. We're going to see change in our state. We're going to see change in our in our nation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, your power. You're exalted. You're exalted above every name. You're exalted above every name. And we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. Come on and give the Lord a praise this morning. Hallelujah. I want Annette to come here a moment. She needs special prayer this morning. If you need special prayer, we want to pray with you. Heavenly Father, we believe in this morning. Stretch forth your hands this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, come right here. We, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to this arm. In the name of Jesus, Lord, where she had this stroke in Jesus' name, we're believing for completeness, Lord, to come forth in Jesus' name. Every muscle. Every muscle come to normal. Every every uh, tendon to come to normal. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe that today. We believe that today. As we continue to pray, many of you are not maybe aware of it, but last Sunday afternoon we put Mother in, in the through the emergency room and she went to the hospital that night and they had to do. Uh, she had a, a blockage in an artery in her left le leg above her knee. And they had to put a stent there. Her foot was already cold. The doctor said that if they hadn't have got to it, soon she would have lost that left leg. But we know that God is, is, is a great God. And I'm telling you, God ordered the doctor that she was supposed to have. He drove all the way to Lake Placid to see her at 1 o'clock in the morning. And the next day, it was in a procedure for three hours on her leg. And we thank God. Uh, he said that, that he, he was glad he got there when he did. So we thank God for that. She's already been transported to uh, Wachula for rehab, and uh, she would love to see you. But let me say to you, the hospitals are saying this very clearly. If you have a cold or if you have a sniffle, or you've been sick, just make a phone call or give a card. The hospitals are saying that. Do not come into the hospitals. And it's very, uh, this, all the hospitals are saying this. But we know our God is able. But let me tell you, this, this season is very tough on the influenza. And I want you to pray for families that has been sick with this. Several, starting in December and present. But, but you know, the thing is, our God is a great God. Amen? And I know He's going to do a great and wonderful thing. Amen? I want you to turn and greet somebody. I see a number of guests with us today that I do not know. But we want to welcome you, Faith Temple family. Would you get out of your seat and go across the aisle, around the building, let them know you're glad to see them here today. We got some our guests from the uh, Thousand Trails and some of the parks here. We're glad to see you here in Crystal Lake and different parts of traveling. And we're glad to have you here in these seasons. So good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Well, y'all having a wonderful time of fellowship. That's what it's all about. Coming to the house of God. and It's good to see you here this morning. Amen. We want to say um, Sister Esther and Ruby and, and Mike took some of our children over to Kids Gym. And I want to say thank you for your ministry with them Friday night and yesterday. 
And I want to say thank you for all those that came out and worked with Sister Martha on the yard sale yesterday. And um, also those men that came and worked on the property and keep beautifying it. Amen. And we appreciate it very much. And um, I don't know if you're noticing the spring growth on the big hedges that we had to have cut down. They're looking good. Alex has been keeping them looking sweet. Amen. He's been working on that. But uh, we just want to thank you for all you do. And uh, also, uh, just a reminder, um, our teenagers are going to be, from my understanding, about 15 going to SunFest the end of March. They're going to be doing some projects. And uh, I was hoping the parents would be here today because I've got a, uh, a request of the parents. On the 17th, the, the children and teenagers are out of school, and uh, the youth are all going to be in a required work day with their pastor and some of the men. So on, on that Monday morning, parents, put it on your calendar. Your son or daughter to be here at the church at 8 o'clock. Amen? And uh, we've got two projects that they're going to do. Uh, we're helping them to go to SunFest on some different ways, and I think young people need to work for some things. Can I get an amen? So the 17th, it is required. Don't let them schedule them out with their friends. And this is not just those going to SunFest, all the teenagers. We need them here. We're going to make sure they're fed that good that day. We've been talking about CARE 20, 2014. Could you put that up for me? CARE 2014 for this year, how the Lord directed that to me, to you, uh, caring as uh, C is for caring and uh, A is for accepting and R is restoring and A is evangelizing. Well, over the last uh, months, I've been ministering in a way to a family that runs a body shop here and they're working on Todd's car this right now. But his dad has been real, real, real sick for a long time and for the last uh, few weeks, his name is Cody Coward. But on uh, Friday morning, he passed on to go to be with the Lord, and um, his son, Tim, and their family, they really don't go to church, per se, but, um, so we're going to, I've already spoken to our ladies president and to our vice president, and we're going to do a care, an accident of care for that family, and it's going to require the, the families, not just two or three ladies, not two or three families, what we're going to do is we're going to, pre- I want you ladies to prepare a meal for them tomorrow to feed their family here at the fellowship hall. They've agreed to come here after the service. And if you would, uh, ladies and men, uh, get with Sister Karen after the service today or tonight. And let's go ahead and, and get um, and whatever food we, that I can furnish through our Cutting Edge Food Center, we'll do so. But uh, we need it prepared. We're only going to have to prepare for maybe about 30, 35 people. So that won't take a lot. So, But we want to show them that we love them. Amen? And reach out to them. I, I'll tell you a testimony, and maybe one day that Tim will get bold enough and want to come in church and, and tell it. He said, I want to tell you something. When I t- took the car, when Ty's car went there after she went deer hunting a few weeks ago, and um, uh, anyway, the thing is, he says, i got to tell you something. He says, you remember back in September, October, you come by one day, and man, he said, business was bad, and we didn't know what we was going to do. He said, you stopped. You stopped right then. And he said, that was on a Friday. He won't never forget it. He said, you prayed for me and prayed for over our business. He says, he says, he said, Pastor Wendell, he said, did you know on Monday until the week before her car went in the shop, he said, we had so much work that we had to work overtime and be able to keep the work up in this shop. He said, I've been telling people, if you're needing something, to go over there and have Pastor Wendell to pray for you. I said, oh boy, you put me on the spot. I give God the glory. So that was a testimony of the power of prayer. So that's the way that I sometimes, when I'm out and about and I'm in businesses, and, and I do, I went by the other day, the young man that's working on those high-end race cars, you know, he he got he was welding, and something in the weld or the oil that he was welding with come up in his face and went in his mouth and literally gave him third-degree burns inside of his mouth into his lungs. And I stopped right there, 
and I had prayer with him, and I've kept in touch with him. This is this is a this is a man that doesn't attend church, but I'm telling you that is your that is your key. Don't say we're going to pray. Do it right then. And it's not, and if there's other guys in the shop, I said we're going to have prayer for for Hank right now. And so they'll all bow their head. You know what I'm saying? And so the thing is, what I'm trying to tell you is power in prayer, but also that care that you share, the care that you do something uh, with that prayer. So the ladies, if you would, um, see Sister Karen. Don't let her have to call you. Just get with her today. Let's get it all worked out. And it's going to be here in our fellowship hall. And uh, Sister Sarah sent her regards this morning. The situation happened at her house this morning with her house that they're having to work on. But uh, uh, be here in the fellowship hall. Cody's funeral viewing is this afternoon from 6 o'clock until 8. I know we'll be in service, but the funeral service is tomorrow, if you know the family, is going to be at Robarts at 11 o'clock. And so I just want us to, um, uh, to Selena and Tim Cowart and uh, to their family, extended family and loved ones, and do that for them. Amen? Uh, as you come in, Sister Betty is coming this morning to share with you. As you come in this morning, I pray you did. Did you get your envelope? Okay, I need some ushers real quickly. If you help me, about four guys. Go ahead, Earl. You can help out. There we go. Here they come. Spread them around. And uh, if you would, we haven't done this in a while, and we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to share with you this important. This is the time of the month that we do this every year, uh, every month, and we want you to help help your church. What this is is so you understand what this is as an envelope. And if the Lord lays on your heart to, to help with this uh, over the next couple of weeks, place a $50. We need 40 50s every month to take care of a specific need of the ministry. And uh, this is your time uh, uh, to do that. So this envelope, and if you don't use the envelope, and if you don't feel impressed to do it, I'm not going to pull and prod at you. Just leave it on the seat. But if you want to do it, and you can't do it today, do it tonight or Wednesday night, whenever you can. Just ask the Lord to help you to, to plant a seed. And uh, remember, we haven't announced it yet, but prior to Easter, we're pretty good ways out because Easter's not till the 20th, April the 20th. It's a long ways out. But we'll have our first fruits offering. We'll be talking about that in the next week or so. But I just want to challenge you, challenge you, as uh, our church treasurer comes and shares with you this morning and in our giving time. Love the Lord with your giving. Amen? Just like we're going to do tomorrow with this family. We're going to plant a seed in that heart of that family. You never know. Uh, what God can do in us reaching out with care. Amen? God bless Sister Betty. Would you give her a hand of appreciation? Give him a hand of appreciation. Give the Lord a hand of appreciation. Amen. Our God is not a God of lack, but He's a God of abundance. And I started out this morning studying something else, and, and the Lord took me to Mark chapter 6, verse 38. And when you read the story, it's about the 5,000 people being fed. You know, the disciples said, well, we'll send them away. I mean, it's late. They're hungry. We don't have food. We don't have enough money to buy food. Not for all these people. But the Lord said, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? They said, some loaves or a few fish. What's that going to do for so many? Lord said, little is much in the hand of the Lord. So he told them, he said, don't be men of, this is Betty's paraphrase, okay? Don't be afraid to sit them down in groups of 50. And I, I, I can see these guys thinking, you're right. Okay, we have a couple of loaves of bread and a few fish, and we're going to sit all these people down, 5,000 men not including the count of the women or the children. We're going to sit them down in groups of 50 to 100. Okay, I could see, okay, here's a couple of fish, all right? Here's a couple of loaves of bread. Well, what about the rest of the folks? But the Lord said, give it here. Just give it here. And he broke it, and they distributed it. And I want you to know at the end of all of this, at the end of all of this, Understand something. When Jesus took it into his hand, the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven, blessed it, and broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples to set before the people and divide the fish among them all. 
So they all, can you say all? They all ate and were filled. And they took up, that's the disciples, took up 12 baskets full of fragments. Wait a minute, we only started out with a couple of loaves and a few fish. Now we ended up with an abundance to be passed on to the next group, okay? I want you to know that God is not a God of lack, but a God of abundance. He is our El Shaddai. He is the God of more than enough. He always gives you more than enough. Why? So that you have enough not just for you to meet your need, but to give away, to give, to pass it on, to pass it forward. So with that, I'm going to give you opportunity to give. (laughs) Give because you love them. Do you know that your giving is in direct relation to the way you love the Lord? If you have been so saved and so filled and so delivered and so set free, you can give him everything. Why? Because you'd have nothing if it wasn't for him in the first place. So if my ushers would get ready, I want to give you plenty of opportunity to purpose in your heart how you're going to give this morning. We want to make sure that any commitments that you've made, any promises that you've made to the Lord, any vows that you've made for finances, that you please keep those. That's in direct relation to your blessing. Because if you hold it out of fear, oh, I might not have enough to meet the need. I can give you one real quick short story, and that was years back when I was learning this principle I had just enough to buy groceries or tithe. Okay, what was I going to do? I had six children at home. Give the Lord the money or go buy food for the kids. Well, I said, okay, God, 50 bucks ain't going to get me far anyway, so here you go. So I put it in, and I said, I'm going to trust you. Well, some lady called me, um, a prominent doctor's wife called me and said, oh, I know that you'd know where to put this stuff because I, I'm at a loss. We're having a move, and i got to empty that freezer, and I just don't know what we're going to do with the stuff. But I know that you know people who are going to be able to be blessed by it. So why don't you come over and empty out this freezer? I had to go buy a freezer <laughs> because I had so much food. I couldn't give it away fast enough. All right, that's just a tad. God, you cannot outgive God, okay? And I'll, that's all I'll say. All right, Father, I thank you for the gift and the giver. Thank you, Lord God, for, for helping them to see that you are their all in all and that if they'll turn loose what they have in their hand, you will multiply it and fold it and multiply it and distribute it out and they'll still have enough for what they need and more than enough to meet everything else. We thank you, Father, that this money is changing kingdoms from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light to propagate the gospel, to do all that you have called that finance to do in this house and beyond, in their lives and beyond. In Jesus' name. Oh. 
sitting with her and talking with her, praying with her. And and um, you're just going to have to understand, she's 95 years of age, and and um, we're all adjusting, and she's wanting to go home, I'm just telling you. So y'all got to pray for her. But uh, let's pray that, that uh, she'll get strength. She's, they're needing to do therapy on her, but she couldn't get out of the bed yesterday. But, I mean, she's been in the bed for over a week. So we just thank God for his healing power. I want Ed to play something for me that uh, I asked him to play. I shared last week before I speak this morning. As we go there, I want you to open your Bibles back to Second Corinthians chapter 4 and then go to Isaiah 60. And uh, we're going to begin continue this series that we've been talking about in relation to care. But I want you to listen to this uh, important word through this man of God. Look around. Tell me what you see. Nearly a billion people entered the 21st century unable to read a book or sign their names. Illiterate and unable to read, not even the Bible. Look around. Tell me what you see. Earthquakes, natural and man-made disasters, political unrest, famine, war, poverty, and disease all around us. The truth of God being trampled and Jesus being scorned by a world in desperate need to encounter him. Tell me, what do you see? Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. And Jesus Christ, the only answer for the world, lives in you and moves through his body, the church. Yet the world says that the church is losing its influence. This cannot be, not on our watch. May the eyes of this generation be open. One-sixth of the world's population is hungry. Half of the world's population lives on less than 
dollars a day. Half of all the children in the world live in poverty. More children die from drinking bad water than HIV, AIDS, and malaria combined. And water is the most abundant resource on the planet. Look around. What do you see? Church, how will we respond? Do you hear the message? We need to pray for our nations. We have to get out of the mindset of just, yes, we're a local church. We got our individual issues and circumstances that we deal with, but we're living in a world that we need to pray for the nations. Amen? And we need to lift them up to the Lord. I want you to open your Bible this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And we're going to read the verses, and I've been reading this to you. And uh, you should have these passages of Scripture uh, down by now. But uh, I was asking the Lord, you know, are, are, are you through with this? And out of last week, I began to share uh, at the end about the glory of the Lord and the importance that the glory of God uh, be acknowledged in our lives. And I'm telling you, we're living in a season. I, I, I sat and watched the other night the opening of the, the Olympics. I like to watch some of that. I don't know if you saw it in, in Russia and and all the stuff they were doing and you know thousands and thousands of people from all over the world and you know one good thing all those athletes are there and they're there for one reason and you know in a way just think about this one day when the trump of God sounds and the church is taken out of this old world and uh, one day we're going to rule and reign back upon this a new creation and the thing is it's going to be all good everybody's going to get along isn't that wonderful? I sat and watched every country, just about every country that was there. You know, some we have uh, uh, 232, I think, from the United States that is uh, there. And Canada had a big crowd, Brother Terry. They did. They had a big crowd of athletes there. But you know, the thing is, when when we all get to heaven and we're all uh, praising God around the throne of God from every nation, it's going to be a glorious day. Amen. Amen. So we need to learn to get along now. You need to get along, get along with your family. You need to get along with your neighbor. Hello, am I talking to the choir this morning? Amen. It's important that we do that. And in every area, get along with your boss. You know what I'm saying? He's your boss. You're supposed to submit to him or her. Amen. You may not agree with what they do. You, hey, as long as you're there under their employment, you're under their authority. Amen. Hey, you got to submit to your pastor too. Come on. Are you listening to me this morning? Can somebody say Amen. Amen. Listen to your pastor. Sometimes he'll help you get out of trouble if you'll listen. Amen. Look at the verse, verse 1. And on the screen, it's going to be coming up in the New King James. I'm going to read it for your benefit. It'll flow together here in the King James. Therefore, seeing we have the ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Listen to that carefully. Verse 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has sinned, excuse me, has shined in, in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Take note of that passage of Scripture. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake. For the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, 
I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Can you say amen to the reading of the Word of God? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Word today, and we ask you, Lord, to guide your vessel as I speak these words that you've given us today. And I'm asking you, Father, today to minister to every need and touch every heart. But, Lord, most of all, we lift up your name above every name and every circumstance, and we're going to give you the glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Last week, and, and I want to challenge you, if in, we have availability to, to uh, you can purchase the series, the CDs, and catch up because this is about the fifth week, and I've been in this, this chapter, and I'm still there, and I was asking the Lord about it last night and this week, and, and said, Lord, what is it you're wanting to say? And, and he came to me out of verse 6. And I want you to look at verse 6 where he says, and I want to read it to you from the Amplified, and it says it this way, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts so as to beam forth. That means outward, the light of the, for the illumination uh, of the knowledge of the majesty and glory of God as it manifests in the person of and is revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We touched on this uh, a couple of weeks ago, but not the extent that I believe that the Holy Spirit has spoke to me to give to you. The latter part of last week's message, I, I shared with you that uh, giving thanksgiving and giving glory to God, and, and it's important that we do that. And as, as I was sitting in the room there yesterday with Mother, I, I began to... Sing an old song, and Andre Crouch wrote this song a long time ago, and it goes like this, To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, for the things He has done. With His blood He has saved me. By His power He has raised me. To God be the glory for the things He has done. Can you say amen? Oh, listen to this verse. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to you. To God be the glory. He says, just let me live and let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And should I gain any praise... Let it go to Calvary. With His blood, He has saved me. By His power, He has raised me. To God be the glory for the things He has done. There's where we need to be, child of God. It's not about you and me. It's not about your children. It's not about this, uh, your neighbors. It's all about God. But see, when we get the Word, as I've been speaking to you, inside of you, you want to go out and share the glory of God and share the love of God to someone else. But sometimes we get so caught up in our little worlds, don't we? Sometimes we get so caught up in our circumstances. We even get caught up in our sicknesses and everybody is around you that, 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 that they know you're sick and, and you know that whatever's going on, they know every bad thing about you. There's folks you definitely don't want to go up to and ask, how are you doing today? You better be ready for a dissertation for about 15 15 minutes. Those are the ones you say, I'm going to pray for you and I'll see you. But see, what we have to be careful of is that we can get caught up in this earthly realm that we do not understand the clarity that God is wanting us to give Him the glory. And see, He is testing, He is trying us and letting us realize that we need to lean on Him and trust Him. Can you say amen? 
Out of this passage of Scripture, as I began to, to uh, uh, read it, and I was asking the Holy Spirit there, and, 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 and He began to drop this passage of Scripture out of Isaiah 60. And I, I want you to go there with me, Isaiah 60. We're going to begin with, with verse 1. And the Word says very clearly there out of that passage of Scripture, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And he says, therefore, God said, let light shine out of darkness. God said, say it. God said. Now, see, here's the principle that I want to get across to you this morning. Oh, Holy Spirit, I'm sensing your presence. If we're going to be a caring church, and we're going to be a loving church, and we're going to be an accepting church, and a forgiving church, and someone that's going to try to reach out to loved ones, let me tell you what, you need the glory of God to rise upon you. Come on, are you listening to me? Because we're living in a day, we're living in a society today that don't want to hear about Jesus. We're living in a society today, you definitely don't want to talk about the blood of Jesus. You don't want to talk about the cross. That's all glory. No, we want to hear of all nothing but, but about grace. Thank God for grace. Thank God for grace. Surely goodness and mercy as well will follow us all the days of our lives. If it wasn't for the grace of God, we would not be here today. He took Sodom and Gomorrah and burned it quickly, didn't he? He took the days of Noah as in the days of Noah. He destroyed the whole earth. But through Jesus Christ, oh, you need to give him thanks for what He did for through His Son, that we might have eternal life. But it's His grace. It's Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, saying, Heavenly Father, just wait a little bit longer. Just wait a little bit longer. That son, that daughter, that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, that baby that's in the womb, Lord, they've got to know about You. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And see, if we're not careful, we'll get so caught up in our life that we don't realize that the Word is saying here that God said, let light shine out of darkness. He says, light has shone in our hearts. See, the light of Jesus Christ, He is the light for this world, and He needs you. You say, well, He's a big God. He don't need me. No, He needs you. He needs you and I to be that vessel we've talked about in earthly treasures that he talked about over in Corinthians. It's in us, inside of us, but sometimes we shut it up and we don't want nobody. We're embarrassed if somebody asks us if you're a Christian. We're embarrassed if they, you know, but I'm telling you what, the first thing that when they're, they're in uh, need or, or, or in uh, need of prayer or crisis, uh, the first person they call is you. Or the church. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? So you've got to take those opportunities. You've got to take those opportunities. Let us all not get discouraged. As, as in, in verse 16 of 2 Corinthians. Could you put that on the screen for me, please? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. He says here in this passage of Scripture, He says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Don't lose heart. Child of God, man and woman of God, let us not lose heart regardless of what we've gone through or what we're going through. And I'm telling you, let me tell you what, while we're still on this God's green earth, you're going to go through stuff. Come on, am I talking to you today? You're going to go through stuff. But let me tell you, you can have the peace of God. You can allow the Spirit of the living God to rise up in you in the midst of a storm, in the midst of your sickness, in the midst of whatever you're going through. Yes, we believe in divine healing. We believe in laying on hands. And I, but I tell you what, I'm believing that when you come into the house of God, you desire and draw on the presence of God, and He can touch you right where you are. Hallelujah. See, we're living in a time and season in which it is the greatest time for you individually in the church to rise to the occasion. I notated it this way, Pastor, what occasion are you talking about? Your light of Jesus Christ inside of you to shine. This is the greatest time. I'm telling you, church, this is the greatest time for the body of Christ. This is the greatest time for Faith Temple Church. This is the greatest time for your life to rise up in the name of the Lord and let your light shine. Come on, are you listening to me? I'm having to, 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 to reprocess church, all right? 
You say, what do you mean by that, Pastor? You've got to understand my upbringing, my training in, in, in college about Christian education and, and the way that church should be and everything. But let me tell you what. I look across this congregation today. I was given last week and the week before 39 people that wasn't in church on Sunday morning. Are you listening to me? I'm having to process all that. Why is it in this time, in these times of, of uncertainty? Let me tell you what. Any one given day, you could go and walk into your job and you could get a pink slip and they can say bye-bye and you don't have nothing to say. We're at a net, you live in a, net, a free will state where they can just let you go without anything at all. And also, too, let me tell you what, the, the, the economy, the, the government, uh, the finances of this government is not good. At any one given time, you could just, your Social Security could be gone. Your benefits, your disability, your food stamps, all those things that you have learned, you have learned, God didn't put it that way, you have learned to be dependent on a government and not on God. You've come to learn to be dependent upon your job and not on God. You've come to be dependent upon getting that paycheck every week. You've come dependent on getting that paycheck every month. But let me tell you what. What would, it ha what would happen if that stopped right now in your life? Most people in America do not even have one week's income in a savings to be able to make it in a period of time. I can tell you, for example, there was one of the largest companies in this community, Mosaic Mines. A couple of years ago, they had a major layoff. I mean, remember that. We had men that made $20, $30 an hour, an hour, that did not have money to buy groceries. But this ministry, Cutting Edge Food Center, was feeding families that were out of work. Are you hear what I'm saying? But where is our trust? Where, Brother Terry, where is our trust at? Where is our trust? We've got to trust God in this season. We've got to trust God in these hours. And see, what I'm talking about is that as we want the light of God, this is the greatest opportunity for the church. But also, too, I want to challenge you through the Word of God. Be faithful. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to the house of God. Be faithful to Him. Can you say amen? I want you to stop today and examine yourself where you are in your relationship with God and Jesus Christ His Son. And as I begin to write what I felt the Holy Spirit was giving me to say, stop. You ever went to a stop sign and didn't stop? I don't know where, I don't know where Rick's at, but I, he and I have conversations when I ride with him. He loves these rolling stops. When I was a police officer, when I was in college, I used to love writing those tickets. You just sit across the street waiting for them. Ticket. You know what I'm talking about? Rolling stops. But I'm here to come to you today. Stop. Look to your name and say stop. I want you to stop right now. I want you to stop today and examine yourself where you are in your relationship with God and Jesus Christ. I want you to know that the hope is in Jesus. You've got to stop and realize who you are. You've got to stop and realize that Jesus Christ is there for you to give you the hope in Him. But the thing is, sometimes we have to stop where we are and examine ourselves. It's like going to a doctor for your physical exam. You go there maybe once a year to get a physical exam and all the things they do with prodding and poking and trying to make sure you're all right. But the thing is, you had to stop and do that. Also, too, we need to stop and examine ourselves and what God is doing. Because, see, I want you to know the, that your hope is in Jesus Christ. Secondly, today, you stop, you examine, the light of the Lord is risen upon you. I want you to say this with me. I have hope. Come on, you've got to have hope in this time. I come today, I come by here today to, to tell you that you have hope. See, you may be here today feeling hopeless or listening over the faith channel hearing this message. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I come by today to give you hope and let you know you have a purpose in life. I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit dropped in my spirit. There's somebody here today, maybe one, two, three on who you are, but you come in here today, you feel hopeless. You feel like there's nothing can happen in your life. There's things like going wrong, and, but I'm 
come to by to tell you that you have hope in Jesus. Come on, church. To God be the glory. The prophet Isaiah in verse 4, he said, well, let's go ahead and read verse 2 there together. He said, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and this darkness all the people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory shall be seen on you. Now I know the prophet was speaking to the children of Israel at that time. But look at verse 4. Lift up your eyes round about you and see, as the, as the brother was speaking on the recording a few moments ago, they all gather themselves together to come to you. Your sons shall come from the far. Your daughters shall be carried and nursed in the arms. The prophet Isaiah in this passage was speaking the words of God to the children of Israel. And because we are as children of God, listen, through Jesus Christ, we are joint heirs, also joint heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing His inheritance with Him. Say hallelujah. It's important that we understand that. I want to say it again. Yes, he was speaking the words of God to the children of Israel. And because we are his children, though Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, we are his heirs and joint heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. So in Isaiah 60, verse 4, he says, Lift up your eyes round about and see. Look what it says, and he said, see in verse 5, and he says, when you see what Christ has done for you. This is what I heard out of this. You've got to see what God has done for you so that you can begin to talk about uh, those that need to see what Jesus has done in your life. Do we keep ourselves covered up? Do we keep ourselves hid? See, you will see and be radiant. Look to your neighbor and say, you look radiant today. Oh. But see what I'm referring to here. You will see and be radiant. Arise and shine from the depression and prostration in which your circumstances have kept you. See, child of God, if you're not careful, let me tell you, there's times that you may be going through it. I've been there before myself in life. But the thing is, I choose to not stay down in the pit. Come on, are you hearing me? I choose to not stay if I feel depressed. Oh, the best thing you can do is get up from that depression and go help somebody else. Are you hearing me? And see, the thing is, you will see and be radiant, arise and shine from the depression and prostration in which your circumstances have kept you. Otherwise, rise to a new life. Shine and be radiant with the glory of the Lord, glory of God. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things He has done. With His blood, He has saved me. Hallelujah. By His power, He has raised me. To God be the glory. Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? So again in 2014, Brother Ed, help me out, or Lindsay, someone. So again, 2014, for you to truly care, I want you to come to the keyboard, please. For you to truly care, you must allow the light of Jesus Christ to radiate from you. That's when you walk into a room Stay with me on the camera, somebody. I'm going to walk. When you walk into a room, they say, what's wrong with you? You've got this radiance about you. Wow. Isn't that awesome? You don't have to say a word. They sense the presence of God. Because, see, you've examined yourself, and you know where your relationship with the Lord is, where, where God is working inside of you. You know that. And you walk into that room. You, you young people, you need to have this. In your life. When you go to school, you should be the number one person they're talking about. Come on. And, and not talking about whose girlfriend you're with or whose boyfriend you're with or if you're having babies or not. You know, kid, teenagers today, that's all they talk about in school anymore. I'm sick of it. God has better plans for you until, that, until, that, until, until God ordains a man and woman in marriage. You want me to talk about that a little bit? No, we we'll go on. But God wants you to be radiant. When y'all down at that food center, man, y'all should be just a glow on you. They say, can I have what you have? Well, come right over here. We'll have prayer. We'll lead you to the Lord right now. Come on. If you're driving a tractor or you're driving a piece of equipment on the job and there's a glow coming out around that thing, they say, man, what's wrong with that guy? There's something good about him. 
at lunchtime and say, can I talk to you? There's just something glowing about you. Then you say, well, you know, it's because I have Jesus in my life. Are you still in that guard shack? When they drive by, the whole building is glowing. You know what I'm saying? Just let it glow. What's that? Yeah. What he was saying in the morning time, they expected me watching the news or whatever, but he's watching Keith Moore or someone else on the Christian program. And, and the thing is, they're, they're saying, you watching that? Well, come on, are you hear what I'm saying? Now, they're watching you. So what I'm trying to get across to you in this year, if we're really truly going to say we care, the number one thing we've got to do is allow the radiance of the Lord Jesus Christ to glow out of us. Those of you that from the parts and different places of the country, you know, as you travel 